Welcome back, everyone, to the Cube's live coverage here, day three at Boomi World. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. We're getting all the action here. We got a great guest, the CFO and president of Boomi, Arlen Shakeman. Thanks for coming on the Cube. The man behind the M&A, big new keynote announcements. Thanks for coming on, on the Cube. Great, great to be here with you. So it's great to see um, good management teams. I've known Steve for a long time. You've been good, good pals with him over the years. Um, Boomi already had a good product. Again, great loyal base. Now you guys are making some big moves. The two big announcements was the two two acquisitions and the strategic deals in, in the ecosystem. Really, kind of, it's a it's a big inorganic move, and you got organic growth of the product. Take us through the uh, the keynote uh, news around the acquisitions, the motivation, uh, rationale. How are you guys thinking about this? Yeah, I mean, when I when you think about our business with such a strong loyal customer base, a really incredible set of products, and frankly, customers want more from us. They want us to help them with other problems they have in their landscape. And building off the platform of products we have just makes us a natural, really a natural growth target for other products to be able to pollinate across you know, our, our customer base, to bring in new customers, and to continue to expand our whole portfolio. You guys had a great uh, career with the new management team. You've only been here for about a year. What attracted you to Boomi? What was the, um, what was the uh, big aha for you? You've known Steve, but you, you're CFO. You're going to look under the covers. You're going to see, okay, what's, what's, how's it organized? I mean, obviously pass the test. What was the what was the key for you to join the company? This is a great business. It's a really good business. It's a well-built product. It's a very happy customer base. It performs financially well, and it's in a space where you know people have been dealing with this problem forever, and it's an intractable problem. And there's really only one independent company at scale solving this problem, and it's us. And that really excites me. I mean, I think we have a great opportunity to be the leader in this space to solve problems in front of our customers that they've just had for so long that not only make their businesses function better, but provide them with incredible ROI and a much more seamless opportunity to drive their company to the right decision. It's interesting, we just came out of the ZERP era, the zero interest rate you know, thing, when you hear that about startups, okay, well, overdriving growth through either too many professional services, cost of sales are overdriving that, not good economics on, yeah. on a lot of go to market. Boomi's got a good business. You were talking before we came on camera. It's like a lot of SaaS, not a lot of services. So a good mix of business for year for Boomi. It is, it is. And as look, we, we, are, we have a business model that allows us to grow in a profitable way because we have recurring revenue and because we have a happy customer base. And when you put a great product together with a happy customer base, you get recurring revenue, you're solving problems for them, and it all works very well together. Well, our team of Cube Research are impressed with you guys. One of the things that jumps out is some nuanced points. I want to get your reaction. One is we heard here on the Cube from and some of the leaderships, obviously great feedback loops, okay? Really fast cycles getting product feedback. That's going to come in handy. But what's interesting, you have a lot of Amazon Web Services kind of vibe. You get to see a lot of use cases. Yes. And you're grinding the old, Bypass market was getting in the sausage making factory and looking at all the plumbing, making that all work. Now that's SaaS, basically. That's basically the cloud. You also play well with the hyperscalers as well, as well as you can be anywhere. You guys yes. play with everybody. Yes. So you got great flywheel going. How would you describe the boomy flywheel? Because um, is it that you can play with everybody, or is it that you see things early, you're getting products out faster? What's the, what's the, the core engine look like? Take us through the, the, the flywheel. I think it's a combination of independence, because we really are Switzerland. I mean, we truly are the only company that wakes up in the morning, rolls out of bed, and thinks, how can I make two competitor solutions work better together and make this a better process for people? And not a lot of people in bigger companies are yeah. doing that. So I think that is absolutely true. Some of the things you saw in the product that, that, are, that Ed had shared on stage and you've seen from our team, we have 20 years of data from our customers. We know how they do integrations. We know how their processes work because we're a cloud solution. And we can leverage that information to help other customers perform their processes in the best ways possible. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I was talking to Merv Adrian yesterday on our analyst segment. We were doing all and analyzing. He's a former Gartner, so he's not there anymore. So I can I can kind of talk about Gartner a little bit. Not a bad way, but you know, they have the magic quadrants. And iPass is a magic quadrant category. If you think about what that is, integrated platform as a service, that's everything now. So in a way, yeah. if you think about applications integrating into infrastructure and making that work, whether it's a critical workload or integration, it has all the same things. Observability needs, um, governance, data is critical performance, low latency, whatever that app is. Yep. That's basically every app now. If you look at the Gen A landscape, that's going to be the table stakes. So in a way, iPass motion is yeah. going to be a motion for all enterprises, especially with Gen AI when yes. the data is going to be the critical factor. Because And so, okay, you believe that. Yes. Okay, so as you look at that, you see the strategy on stage. 
What's the financial strategy of Boomi? Because matching the financial strategy with the growth strategy is key. Um, growth strategy is take the iPass, sequence to the broader market opportunity. That's because that's the iPass isn't going away. Technically, yeah. it's growing at 35% Kager. That's just still growing good. Yeah. Check. And then the new growth is going to come, the upside potential. So how do you match the financial strategy? What is the financial strategy? The financial strategy is happy customers. If you have great customers and customers are buying things from you, you'll make money. You know, the operating discipline of the company is absolutely, it's part of our muscle. There's no doubt about yeah. that. But that doesn't, you know, that, that's an output to me and not an input. The product, the customer satisfaction, the solving problems, the return on investment, the value we deliver will drive the financial return. As you said, we have a very solid core business. Financial results will come as a result of our execution of our roadmap and our product and our customers being happy with it. Talk about the uh, the land, adopt, expand kind of concept that everyone kind of talks about, but we hear, I mean, I talked to a customer yesterday here in the Cube, and they said, hey, they saw the manual process that was causing a lot of internal pr hype, uh, process problems, yep. and they automated the, the process completely, yep. and everyone's happy. And then it grew to other departments. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> word, word of mouth, so you have, a, you have in, inside net contract value increases across the customer base. Yes. Is that part of the, uh, and you factor that into the modeling? Well, we, 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 when you look at our NRR growth rates, they're obviously factored in, they're obviously well above 100%. So we, you know, we are selling to our customers, we're getting new customers. Ultimately, this product solves in any number of given problems you identified yeah. in, in platform for our customers. And they once it's in, they can utilize it to solve other problems. So we'll continue to expand, and then we'll continue to expand our portfolio and continue to solve problems for them. You know, we have customers all the time who come to us. I talked to a CIO last week who basically said, this is my fourth time using Boomi. I love Boomi, I'm using Boomi. That wasn't a sales process, right? That was a, I am a user, I like the yeah. product, and I know what problems I need to solve. That product will expand. Then there are other yeah. times where we're in and we're trying to show value by bringing together our entire portfolio. As you look at your investment strategy, if you do go on that growth tear that I'm predicting, like a service now level growth, which is looks like that's an opportunity with, yeah. with the product, um, you gotta pick your marks, <laughs> right? So you got the M&A going on with the API. That's a big move, that signals to the market, hey, we're serious about this infrastructure on Gen AI, API, 85% of the traffic runs through API, yeah. so that's a good call. Take us through the process of that investment and then the mindset, and how does that translate to potentially future deals? Yeah, so when, when I think about M&A and I think about our landscape, I really think about it in an inorganic way, which is we can partner with companies, we can buy companies, we're going to have resells and OEMs. There's a broad thing, a set of, of tools we have in our toolbox to continue to expand yeah. our business. And we'll do that smartly. And I think you saw that with the acquisitions around API, mm -hmm. where we have a strategy to provide people with visibility and governance of all the API, APIs they have with APITA, and then with, with more technology to help drive API API governance and gateways across the platform that we offer. So that'll be a holistic approach that will also be embedded with our entire ecosystem. So we continue to drive that value. So to your point about where are we going to invest, we're going to invest in our ecosystem, we're going to invest in our customer base, we're going to invest in additional products so that we continue to add value to our customer base. You know, one of the, the side effects of success is um, there's not enough people to actually run the Boomi software because the the training opportunity. So I've heard from customers that said, I love Boomi so much, I have so oh, so many open positions, yeah. uh, they can't fill them fast enough. So this is, it becomes a, a skill labor issue. And you got the automation with the agents, okay, that's going to be helpful. Talk about the, um, the the customer base, because if you continue the growth, you're going to need to have more people using Boomi. Yeah, and we need more partners. I mean, we have a very strong ecosystem, but we can't invest enough in our partners who can then turn that into more value for our customers. And I think that'll be our lever. If, if I'm a partner, Talk to me about my opportunity. Is, is there like specific white spaces that you guys see um, where you can say, hey, you know, if you want to come in and get a patch of grass here and grow yeah. with Boomi, here's some areas. Is there, are there areas that you guys have earmarked and identified that could be great opportunities for partners yeah. or other new opportunities? I think there continue to be opportunities and I think those opportunities fall in all the categories we're talking about, which is, am I solving a specific problem for a customer? Absolutely use Boomi. It, do I have a customer who needs to consolidate their landscape onto a platform, which will solve many of yeah. their connectivity and data needs? Absolutely use Boomi. And now that we're in this conversation about AI, I, everything I see in the market is, how am I going to solve my AI yeah. problem? And there is no AI without data. Yeah. And we bring data yeah. across to whatever that repository is. So that platform conversation is an enormous opportunity for our, for our partners to go to their customers and to say, I have a tool that will help you solve the problems and meet your business needs. You know, Arlen, we were talking before we came on camera about our, our, our backgrounds and we've been through some, some waves of innovation in the past. Um, you know, I call, I won't say I pass, I'm just an overgeneralization, so I'll take a little liberty here. 
I won't call it the cleaner, that scene in Pulp Fiction. You know, it's like, I've got to clean, i got to clean up all this mess, IT mess. Um, you know, these transitions, mainframe to mini minis to inter internetworking, all these major technology transformations require a lot of grinding, like to put things together. But now the internet is connected. The, the fact that you guys are doing the API management and the federated um, API system is, is just proof points that the sprawl, the connectedness of the world yep. is a network. It's distributed computing. Yes. And so this is now the internet market for companies. Um, so, okay, we've been there, done that. What's the, the, the disruptive enabler? Because you guys have a platform and I like the vision, but platforms enable things. Mostly it's a value proposition. But in this market, it's a disruptive enabler. It's going to disrupt things. Gen AI is going to change the game. Where do you guys see that, that disruption? And it's not a bad thing. It's what happens in these major waves. Yes. Some go away. Some people don't make it. Yeah. Some things change. Observability, we're talking about like you all the time. That category is going to change radically because it's a yep. feature of the system. Absolutely. It's not a company. Yeah. So, okay, you start to see that. That's a feature, not a company. Vector database. <laughs> That's not a company, yeah. that's a feature. Yeah. So you're going to start to see this in this transition. Can you share your, your thoughts on how you guys see the disruption opportunity, the yeah. enabler of that? Well, I, th I think there are three things that really come to mind. One is that we are clearly moving from an integration platform to a enterprise platform, which will enhance some of what we're talking about in terms of our overall ability to, to provide services and help that, help that transformation. And the second is, is that we are really a cloud platform. I mean, this company was born in the cloud, is in the cloud, and resides in the cloud, and always will reside in the cloud. And that gives us that ability through those transitions to modify our technology platform and continue to enhance what we do. And then the third is, as you see these processes happening, we're just giving customers flexibility because to your point, AI in the automotive industry won't be the same as AI in the financial services business or in healthcare. And yeah. our platform is horizontal and agnostic, and we have that visibility to enhance our customers' processes yeah. and provide them the ability to be able to implement the changes they need. You guys have probably great margins. I don't know if you could share them on the camera, but um, being in the cloud gives you a great economic margin opportunity. Yes. It also gives you great relationship with the hyperscalers because you got more compute going on there. They like that, more storage. Uh, and so as you look at the agility of Boomi, there really isn't a player out there that I could point to and saying, you know, in the data world, taking advantage of horizontal scalability of data and the vertical specialism in the app. So kind of the data has always been this kind of like vertical thing. I got a data warehouse, and even Snowflake and Databricks. They got data lakes, you guys got data reservoirs. What's next beyond that is horizontally scalable data. No one's really doing that. This yes. seems to be something that you guys seem to be focused on. Yes, is that absolutely, absolutely. I we think we, we see the convergence of APIs and integration platform and data management all coming together because ultimately they have to reside in one place so that you can utilize AI to drive whatever the actions you need to happen in your business, which is then leads into our point, which is if we have, if we can provide you with the ability to have a clean set of data to take action, you should be using an agent to help you take that action. And obviously there's a whole set built into what our solution is, yeah. but then we also believe the partners will be able to leverage that clean data to help action be taken so that you can sleep well as a CEO or a CIO or a board member knowing that the actions that are being taken across my company are the right actions. What's interesting about you guys, and I think this is probably one of the reasons why you get attracted to the company, I, I like, one of the reasons I like the company is that all the work that they did leading up to the Gen AI hype was on purpose, by accident, a great thing. In other words, we, I, Boomi was already doing the work. Yes in a way that prepared the company yep. to actually take advantage of the low-hanging fruit that, that's real use cases yes. in production for AI. We generate AI specifically because the data's there. Yes. And then that transition from uh, iPaaS to enterprise platform is a TAM expansion opportunity. Do you guys talk about that in meetings, say, hey, our TAM is uh, this, and now it's this? What is the, the total adjustable market? What does it change? Because if it goes to the next level, which it yeah. will, you're in the Gen AI business. Yeah, I think, so the Gen AI business is obviously being solidified as we speak. Yeah. I think what you said is 100% correct, which is that this is a business that was built to enable AI, because without data, there is no AI, and we've been in the data connectivity yeah. business for 
20 years. So I, I do think that the, yeah. the company is incredibly well positioned for an innovation that occurred in the marketplace and that we're, we're well positioned to take advantage of that. When we talk about TAM, we have a big enough TAM. Our TAM is $10 billion. Our TAM is plenty big. <laughs> I worry less about our TAM and more about our ability to deliver what the market needs from us because then we will get more of that TAM. And so I, you know, we're not in a small TAM in any way. So it's not a real, it's, you're already in a TAM. Yes. That's massive. So it's not a really a conversation. Yes, you're already in the middle of the action. Yes. That's basically your point. All right, so the, the question that everybody wants to know on that's watching is, um, what's the next check you're going to write for an acquisition? Um, are you, do you have a shopping list? Is there uh, a bunch of companies you're looking at right now? Uh, can you? <laughs> I, think, I think any good M&A strategy has to align incredibly well with what's available in the market and what you need in your products. Yeah. And so what you'll see us do is in much the same way as we took action in API, we found targets that made sense for us that fit in our portfolio that were good cultural fits, we'll make those successful. As we continue to focus on other areas, we'll drive leadership and understanding in those spaces. We may partner in certain spaces, we may OEM in certain spaces, we may resell in certain spaces, we may acquire in certain spaces. But our approach to however we enhance our portfolio will be driven by a holistic approach for what's available. So you got, you're going to bring the, your M&A playbook to this market, balance the inorganic growth versus organic growth from the product Absolutely. side. All right, cool. Now the next question is a little bit more, kind of, I'm just curious, because you had a great growth story. Uh, congratulations, by the way, and the new teams get Steve's great CEO, and you're seeing new talent come in with the acquisitions and the, and the management team, uh, just take it to the next level. You got to get, you, you got to be getting some offers uh, to get bought, and I know you, you've been through that before in your, your private company. Also, you got financing potential opportunities to get more cash, is there a discussion of IPO? Is there more discussion for more uh, refresh, more dry powder? Um, is there nice cash flow coming in? The financial health of the company? What, yeah. What's Take us through your mindset there. So we, we, we are not forced to do anything. We are a profitable company, cash flow positive with a reasonable you know, balance sheet. We're owned by two very friendly, large private equity firms that, you know, that want to see us grow. And we're really focused on growth. And for us, you know, we're, we've, we've done the right things when it comes to our, finance, our business model and enabling ourselves to make the right investments. We're focused on making the right investments and everything else is an outcome. I and mean, we can't determine what happens in the public markets or what happens in the debt markets. You, you guys feel you're well capitalized, plenty of capital available to you guys to execute. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's been interesting in this market as there's been a lot of yard sales and private equity gets a, gets a bad rap because there's a bunch of people who just take care of stuff and some people have a growth mindset. Sounds like your investors are looking for more growth, letting you guys run. Yes, I think, I think we have the, a very good balance of operating discipline in this company the way that it, it grew up, and some of that is from the spin out of Dell, some of that is from being owned by private equity, but ultimately this is about yeah. growth. What's the process, what are your key uh, performance metrics that you look at, and what's your dashboard look like? Yeah, I mean, we focus a lot on ARR, on renewal rates, on NRR, um, you know, continuing to add value across the customer base, you know, in terms of trying to structure things that make yeah. sense with our customer base around yeah. um, consumption and around throughput. So I think we have a lot of flexibility, but it's mostly it's about, you know, are we getting the return we expect when we make an investment in a product and yeah. our customers acquiring yeah. that and then keeping it. Yeah, new customer, new new logos, extend, extending business within the customer, all the basics pretty much. Absolutely. Well, you guys have got a great operational focus. I love that you guys, are with op more operationalizing the AI, you got the cloud agility, got a good ecosystem. Yeah. Feeling good. It's good. It's a great business. <laughs> it's a great business with this happy set of customers. To, to wrap wrap up, last question. Next year, when we're at Booming World Twenty Five, and think that what's going to what's going to be the conversation? Um, it, we have a very broad portfolio of products, and I and I expect that conversation will be how much value the Boomi platform is, being, is yeah. bringing to the AI investments companies are making this year. But I think if you look back at last year, there was a lot of conversation about, well, yeah, we see AI, but we don't have the money right now, we'll figure it out. Yeah. This year, we all know there are a lot more CIOs and CEOs and CFOs focused on how am I going to leverage AI? We are a natural launching point for leveraging AI across your business. And our goal to, will be to get here next year and for me to be sitting here with a customer or two and say, look, how much value did that Boomi platform provide for you guys in launching your AI initiatives? Because that will take time and yeah. it will take it will be a huge change for companies. You know, Dave Vellante and I always talk baseball analogies or horse analogies given Kentucky Beer has happened, but with the baseball analogy we were saying is in this AI market, there's so much hype. If you can deliver just some singles, yeah, can get on base, I agree. show value, there's a lot of overdriving. Hey, we're going to boil the ocean over. So you know, and all these big market inflections. It's show me the proof. Yes, I agree. And with it's that. not so much skeptical. It's more of 
you don't, how are we going to invest? How are you going to double down on it? So I think that seems to be the key focus for you guys. You can deliver value out of the gate for customers. Yes. I mean, we are a platform in place in 20,000 customers to go test and leverage many of the opportunities they see. I mean, you guys are modernizing IT in a way that's going to be game changing. We're excited about it. You guys pull that off. Yeah. All right. Oh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really right. appreciate it. Congratulations Thank on your you. deals. Uh, big moves, and we'll be following the growth. Great. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate the time. Okay, we're getting all the action here. Day three, I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. SiliconAngle.com is where all the action is. That's with the news, and we'll be back with more coverage here at Booming World in Denver after this short break. Look,